hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Ijeon in Seoul. Coming up on today's edition of Business Daily. Thanks to growing demand for smartphones and high-definition TVs, exports of Korea's OLED display panels are expected to rise next year. What could be a way to go green and save money at the same time? Electric car sharing. We have these stories and more coming right up. But first, Korea's finance minister says the country will continue its corporate restructuring drive next year. Speaking at a meeting with related ministers on Monday, Minister Yu Il-ho said the government will review action plans to strengthen four key industries, namely shipbuilding, shipping, steel and petrochemicals, and lay out the specifics of what needs to be done next year. Minister Yu added that the government will also keep an eye on potential risk factors for other key industries and act to counter them if necessary. He said 2016 was a year for establishing the grounds and setting regulations for the corporate restructuring drive. And Korea's alien shipping and shipbuilding industries have been undergoing intense restructuring amid an industry-wide slump. Data from the country's statistics body looks to suggest that more young people are turning to self-employment as jobs become increasingly hard to come by. Statistics Korea report shows that more than 12 percent of the single household young male population had turned to running their own business last year, a near 5 percentage point increase since 2006. In the same period, the ratio of employment income out of overall earnings dropped for both young men and women, while money earned from their own businesses grew by double digits. The youth unemployment had hit a 13-year high for the month of November at 8.2%. Now turning to the latest update on the nation's bird flu outbreak, which is showing no signs of dying down. The total number of birds culled or set to be slaughtered exceeded 26 million as of Monday, wiping out about 16 percent of the country's poultry stock in 40 days. Now the government has now even mobilized armed forces to accelerate the call and supplement the lack of manpower. Nearly 27 percent of Korea's egg-laying hens have been culled since the first reported case in mid-November, pushing the government to waive import tariffs on eight types of egg products from January for six months. The country's daily egg output, which had been about 42 million on average, plunged 20 percent since the bird flu outbreak. Korea's display market is about to get a lift from growing global demand, which could in turn help drive overall Korean exports higher as well. And with the help of a weakened currency value, Korea's export trend could see some light next year. Our Shin Semin has the details. Korea may see signs of positivity in exports next year, driven by improved global demand for its OLED panels. Analytics firm IHS Market projects that the global OLED market will grow 32% in 2017, totaling 19.2 billion US dollars, with shipments reaching 630 million units. Already, the increased production is being reflected in outbound shipments, driving up the country's IT-related item exports by 3.3 percent in November on year. And major Korean manufacturers are rolling up their sleeves. Samsung Display has already poured over $4.9 billion into making small and mid-sized OLED panels for smartphones and tablets during the first three quarters this year and plans to invest an additional $4 billion next year. The decision follows a deal Samsung reportedly struck with Apple for next year that includes supplying it with a large volume of OLED panels for the next iPhone series. Another big player, LG Display revamped its business to focus on OLED technology and is also seeking to bump up its production of OLED TV panels to 1.7 million from its initial goal of 1.5 million set early this year. All this could help bolster export growth, especially with a weakened Korean won. It's a positive influence on both Korea's import and export fronts. With the Korean won depreciating, local exporters will be able to make more profit, and that trend is likely to continue for some time next year, given the Fed's projection of at least three additional rate hikes. 
Korea's central bank estimated that export prices on a one basis went up 4.1 percent in November on month, the highest increase in over seven years. Overall exports jumped 2.7 percent last month after nose diving 6.3 percent on year in October due to the production halt of Samsung's Galaxy Note 7 and a prolonged unionized strike in the automobile industry. Shin Se-min, Business Daily. Samsung Electronics is increasing its presence in Russia's mobile phone market. According to data by market researcher GFK, Samsung took over 20 percent of the mobile phone market, landing in the number one spot. Samsung has maintained the top spot since November of last year, but its share dipped slightly following the discontinuation of the Galaxy Note 7 phablet. Apple came in second with a share of 12.4 percent last month, followed by China's Huawei with an 8.6 percent share. The Korean equity market didn't move much on the first session of the last week of 2016. And as we wrap up the year, we'll take a look at not only as some of the market events for this week, but how the Korean market's stock market performed overall throughout the year. Joining us for this is our market's contributor, Choi jin Suk. Hello, jin Suk. Thanks for having me. All right, so as we wind down for the year, how mm -hmm. did the Korean stock market close on the first session of the week? Movements on the Korean equity market as we opened this year's last week of trading were quite muted. The Kospi was mostly uh, in positive territory throughout the session, closing at 2037.75, up by 0.09% compared to the previous session. Institutional investors were the only net buyer on the Cosby market. The cost of market, though, opened the session with a slight uptick, but it soon gave up early gains to fall by 0.74%, closing at 615.16. Trading volumes of both markets remain relatively low. So not only are things pretty quiet on the trading front, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like there's a lot lined up for the week either. That's true. Uh, the, that's one of the reasons why experts expect investors will be in the so-called wait and see mode throughout the week. In terms of economic data, we'll have housing and consumption indicators from the U.S. Except for those indicators, we do not have major economic data such as employment. But as we are getting uh, closer to the year end, investors in Korea might want to turn their eye on stocks paying high dividends before the ex-dividend date on Wednesday. For investment strategy for uh, 2017, investors and experts will likely take a close look at the government's announcement on Thursday, which includes uh, key economic policies going forward. The Korean equity market will be closed on Friday and reopen on January 2nd. Then in terms of annual performance, mm -hmm. how would you say markets did? In short, the Korean equity market failed to escape from its consolidation period once again. The Kospi index has risen by around 4% compared to last year, but the market has severely underperformed compared to overseas markets. This year's uh, intraday peak for the Kospi was 2073.89 on September 7th. That's well below 2231.47 on April 27th of 2011, meaning the Kospi index has been stuck within a certain range for at least five years. Korea Exchange said the volatility of monthly returns on the Korean market is only 1.87 in 2016, much lower than other emerging markets including China, Brazil, Russia, and India. Decoupled with the entire market, Samsung Electronics, though, has enjoyed a huge rally all year long. Share prices of the company have risen by uh, more than 40 percent, surpassing its all-time high many times in 2016. So what are the predictions for next year? I mean, what will be some of the major market events? Mm -hmm. Experts expect market conditions in Korea will be at least better in 2017. According to nine major security firms survey, the Cosby market is expected to trade between the uh, 1890 and 2233 range in 2017, which means the market can rally by about 10 percent if things go really well. Quite a few firms expect that the market can escape from its prolonged consolidation period by around Q3 of 2017. 
Experts cite economic stimulus measures from the U.S. and China, as well as global economic recovery, as reasons for being optimistic. However, political uncertainty, both from home and abroad, can always spook market sentiment, which is why experts remain cautiously optimistic for next year's market. But the Korean stock market has been mostly isolated from overseas markets mm -hmm. when it comes to strong rallies. So how did things look like this year? And do experts expect this trend to continue next year? Unfortunately, the answer would be yes. Okay. Among major stock markets over the globe, Brazil has enjoyed a huge rally of more than 30 percent, followed by Vietnam of about 15 percent and the U.S. of about 10 percent last year. Although the Chinese stock market has suffered from a more than 10% decline, the Korean market has underperformed compared to global markets. A similar trend is likely to continue next year. Xinyang Securities even describes this as the U.S. market being born with a silver spoon in its mouth, while the Korean market being handed a third spoon. But there's always bright spot. In particular, I would like to focus on analysts' calls, saying that cyclical sectors, including IT, financials, and materials, will outperform within the Korean market in the latter part of 2017. If this potential rally is supported by uh, economic recovery in the country, you never know, the Korean market might be in the global spotlight next year. All right, let's definitely hope for that. Thank you so right. much for coming in today. Thank you. Car sharing is when people rent vehicles for short periods of time, often by the hour. And car sharing using electric vehicles is becoming more popular because of its efficiency and relatively low cost. Our Yuna Skim tells us more. Office worker Lee Min Jung often heads to work in a rented electric vehicle. To commute a combined distance of 30 kilometers back and forth, she says it's about $10 cheaper than using a regular gasoline-powered car. She also turns to the car-sharing service when she's in a rush. I use it when I commute. It's quiet, no gas fumes, and my favorite part, it's cheaper. Then there's the car-sharing company that specializes in EVs. Socar says the vehicles are able to travel more than 300 kilometers on a single charge, and it aims to increase its customer base while capitalizing on the shorter mileage. As a matter of fact, data from Socar and Lotte rent a show more customers are opting to borrow electric vehicles as their driving range becomes longer. Their popularity also jumps over that of their gasoline-powered counterparts in both average rental time and average travel distance. Our marketing event has been so popular that the competition rate hits one out of 2,500. We're planning out to roll out new EVs in the coming days. We charge nothing for the driving fee, so that helps increase the rental time and customer satisfaction. Led by millennials, more people are seeking cost-friendly ways of getting around, even if it means not owning their own vehicles. And this is an area the government is examining for future investment as well. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. And major developments are being made in the domestic drone industry as Korea looks to become one of the most advanced leaders in drone technology. Our Lee Ju Young has more. A small joystick that accompanies a wireless thumb ring is all you need when it comes to controlling the speed and direction of this unmanned aerial vehicle. Existing drone controllers need to be handled with two hands and require a considerable amount of practice for operation. But SHIFT is a drone controlling system developed for easy and intuitive control of drones with one hand. Developed by Seoul-based startup This Is Engineering, the controller SHIFT is just one byproduct of the government's $428 million investment to nurture the drone industry as a new growth engine. The handheld device can take professional aerial photographs and is also compatible with other company models. 
We are aiming for prompt mass production to offer our products globally by the first half of 2017. We're also in the process of signing contracts with other drone manufacturers to allow users to control their drones with our device. This comes as the global drone market is set to grow from $6.4 billion in 2014 to $11.5 billion in 2023, with discussions underway to utilize drones in various industries. Drone racing is also quickly becoming a major event in the UAV community, with the fledgling sport emerging as the next big potential pastime. Lee Ju-young, Business Daily. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.